Hey guys, welcome back to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel. And in this episode, I want to show you snake anatomy, i.e. the parts of a snake from head to tail. I want to go over each part and show you why snakes are such awesome animals. I just happen to have my bamboo male right here and he's going crazy. I usually don't wrap them around my neck because they can choke you up pretty quick. They're really strong, but I'm kind of keeping an eye on this guy. And then after I go over the snake anatomy, I want to show you Lucy and we're going to feed another rat. She is entering into the breeding season and I'm really trying to beef her up with a lot of rats, trying to put some weight on her. Hopefully she'll lay a clutch of eggs this year. So let's start with the snake anatomy with this bamboo. Okay, so first I want to talk about the muscular structure of a snake. And let me tell you, a snake has a lot of really tiny little bones. They have basically a spine that goes all the way down and, and off the, the vertebrae. They have ribs that are basically from head to tail through the whole snake and they don't really have any really big bones and I think that's one of the reasons they're really strong is because you know if you look at you know like the forearm of a person most of the the your the the makeup of your arm the mass of your arm is a really big bone that takes up a lot of space and a snake they have you know you'd think you know how strong is a snake and you kind of look at how big it is compared to your arm <laughs> you get a snake that's as big as your arm let me tell you that snake is is a lot stronger than you would even ever imagine because there's not many bones there's there's a lot of little bones but there's no real big bones to take up a lot of that space and and, and they, they have and some incredible strength I don't know if you've ever picked up a really big snake like a reticulated python they have some immense strength that will really surprise you and it's one of the reasons I usually don't wrap a snake around my neck because even like a snake like this if you kind of wrapped it around and that snake squeezed, it could choke you out. You really have to be careful. I'd say this is probably the biggest snake that I'd be comfortable kind of draping around my neck like this. If you have a really big snake, I would highly recommend, you know, draping it over your shoulder. Avoid getting it around your neck. I've seen some people start turning blue with big snakes wrapping around their neck. And especially with big snakes, you don't want to wrap them around your torso because they have so much strength, they can actually knock the wind right out of So it. one of my viewers asked me if I defang my snakes. As a matter of fact, I don't defang my snakes. The fangs are inside of the mouth and there's nothing, ball pythons don't have fangs. Only venomous snakes have fangs and the fangs are really just two really large teeth that fold in and when they bite they fold out and they inject venom. That's the purpose of the fangs. And a typical snake has a lot of teeth but they don't have, you know, for ball pythons they don't have have fangs they have teeth and let me tell you they have a lot of teeth on the top and the bottom and those teeth are razor sharp they have two rows of teeth and they're actually pointing in and one of my snakes actually bit me latched onto my hand and one of my big ball pythons and it hurt really bad I was bleeding all over the place I was like how do I get this snake off of my hand and what I tried to do what I actually ended up doing is I took my finger and I put it in the mouth and I gently pulled back on the top of the mouth to get it off my hand and lo and behold those teeth are so sharp they tore up my finger really bad so now I'm bleeding from my hand I'm bleeding from my finger and I got blood all over the place it was a pretty crazy experience and let me tell you those teeth are really sharp and you really have to watch out for the snake bite and the funny thing is is when they open up their mouth you really can't see any teeth it just looks like pink material like a pink tissue on the top of the bottom of their mouth but let me tell you underneath that pink tissue there are a lot of razor sharp teeth so in addition to the teeth and the fangs there's another advantage that that uh, snakes have I would say over almost any other animal and they can actually see in the dark if it's completely pitch black they have thermal infrared vision and where they get that is they have little heat pits on the sides of the mouth and people look at the kind of I don't know if you can actually see that but they actually have little heat pits on either side of the mouth 
and they, they just like, look like little tiny holes on either side and and it kind of confuses people it almost looks like it almost looks like nostrils or something all along the side of the mouth but what those are is those are heat pits and they can pick up thermal infrared and they really use that to hunt prey in the middle of the night it's a pretty effective way to hunt rodents so snakes really don't have a nose or nostrils per se to actually smell what they actually use is their tongue they actually lick the air and they bring the the, the particles from the air into the top of their mouth on the top of their mouth they have what they call a Jacobson's organ and what that does is it acts as a nose and they can smell the air it's, it's kind of weird how they kind of they stick their tongue out and especially when they're kind of hunting for food you can tell they're sticking their tongue out when they bring it into their mouth they can actually smell their environment from what I've heard they can actually have a sense of smell that's 600 times as sensitive as our sense of smell which is pretty amazing. So snakes are pretty amazing in that they have no arms and no legs but yet they are in more habitats than any other animal on the planet. They're in the tropics, they're in the trees, they're on the ground, they're in the desert, they're, they even live under the ocean, under the water. It's pretty amazing and the, if you look at the internal organs of a snake they're pretty similar to most other animals. There's a few differences and I would say uh, one of the big differences is they actually have two lungs. Some people say yeah a snake only has one lung. Well that's actually kind of a misnomer. They have two lungs but only one of them is functional. The other one is kind of like uh, more like an air sac. It's, it's not really used for respiration. So in essence they they pretty much have just one lung but if you if you actually look at the anatomy inside of a snake they actually have two lungs when you're uh, when you're actually looking at them. And if you look at the other organs they actually have a heart. The, the heart's a little bit different. So the heart is a three chamber heart versus most animals have a four chamber heart. And I think it's because it helps them. The theory is that it helps them to go through the hibernation and the, and the different uh, cycles that reptiles go through versus warm blooded animals that have a four chambered heart. They also have uh, kidneys and a gallbladder and pretty much everything else that, uh, that most animals have. It's, it's pretty amazing to, to actually you know look at the insides of the snake and you know I was, I was looking at YouTube and they dissect some of these snakes in classrooms and stuff and it's pretty interesting going through the different organs and seeing what's inside of a snake and it's pretty much everything that you would expect in a regular mammal you know a warm-blooded animal except that everything is stretched out really long you know the it's you know the lungs the lungs are really stretched out and and the, the lungs aren't actually side by side one is ahead of the other and one is further back and it's all kind of crammed into a big long tube it's kind of kind of interesting to actually see what's inside of a snake so another thing that's pretty amazing about snakes is that they can open up their jaw larger than you would you could possibly imagine if you've ever seen a snake eating a really large rodent it's pretty incredible I fed Lucy some really big ones especially when she was a little bit smaller and she's <laughs> her mouth opens up so big especially when I'm feeding my ball python some of these larger rats you've probably seen it on some of my feeding videos it is really incredible and they they can open their mouth a lot bigger than most other animals that I have ever seen I don't think there's any animal like a snake that can actually open their mouth that big and swallow some uh, an animal completely whole which is pretty incredible the other interesting fact is the esophagus is is, is basically really hardened and movable and when they're eating something really big they're they're wrapping their mouth around something it doesn't seem like they could breathe but their esophagus is really hard and it's movable and it allows them to breathe while they're eating really big prey. another interesting fact about snakes is uh, is there uh, <laughs> this one's like freaking me out <laughs> all right the other interesting thing about snakes is that they don't have any ears and there's a big debate whether they can actually whether they, whether they can actually hear at all or whether they can hear a little bit or if they're completely deaf I've heard some people say snakes are completely deaf they can't hear at all I've seen some other people say the internal uh, structure of the ear is similar to other mammals even though they don't have an ear they're just kind of kind of blocked off because they don't have any eardrums and some people think that they can hear to a certain degree at a low level but it's not like you know we can hear so it's 
it's like, you know, they get the night vision, I guess that's the compromise. You can't hear anything as well, but you can see in the dark, which is a pretty cool trade off. All right guys, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed Lucy a rat. I'm gonna prepare one. What I do is I euthanize them with CO2 and I use my really, Oh, yeah, this is one of the reasons I don't put snakes around my deck, because they can choke you out, let me tell you. Whew. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed Lucy a rat, and usually I euthanize with CO2, and I use my really oldest males that they're probably, I'd say they're probably about three going on three and a half. So some of these males, they, they won't really last that much longer. They're pretty much just kind of hanging out as retired. They're almost kind of like uh, in retirement mode, I guess. And some of them just, you know, they get, they get really old. Sometimes they don't even make it to where I'm feeding the snakes. They just kind of pass away. So these guys are really old retired breeders and this this is really the reason that I bought my reticulated pythons because you know I'm, I'm going through all these rones raising them up and the males get really big the males are too big for my ball pythons to eat so I actually feed them to my reticulated pythons that's why I bought my retics in the first place and Lucy is going crazy for rats so let's feed her a rat I know she's fired up it is always exciting feeding a retic that is in a feeding frenzy. All right guys, so take a look at Lucy. She is fired up. She is looking for another rat, I can tell. She's probably gonna jump at that rat and get a little crazy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this tub in the front enclosure and see if she'll take a rat. <laughs> she is fired up and ready to go. Oh, <laughs> not too bad. <sighs> Last couple of days, she's been going crazy, like hitting the walls and the ceiling and <laughs> just going crazy. That one, she hit pretty good. That was actually a black rat versus those white rats. And I don't know if it matters on the color or not, but it seems like she'll take just about any color. And it's, you know, sometimes if they cool off a little bit, I have to actually warm them up under a heat lamp to, to get her to go. But she's, she's, I even forgot how many rats that I was giving her. I think that must be like rat number five or six. So it looks like she's slowing down a little bit. And as soon as I probably, I'll probably give her one more rat. I actually have a tub that, that's full of rats and there's one more rat in there. I'll probably give her another rat tomorrow. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pair up for one last time for the breeding season. Hopefully they'll actually breed and we'll get some eggs this year. Okay, so there you have it. That was a brief overview of snake anatomy as well as feeding Lucy one more rat, trying to gear up to pair up one more time for the reticulated python breeding season. Hopefully we'll have some retics at the upcoming shows. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.